job techniques. So the industry would look to this one source for its craftsmen. Headquarters for the Union is this charming southern community, Pressman's Home, Tennessee. Forty miles from the nearest railroad station, ten miles from the nearest federal highway, it's probably the only all-Union community in the United States. Pressman's Home is many things. It's a rather typical little town. Some of its 251 residents own their own homes. Others rent or live in the apartment house. And they send the older of their 95 children to nearby schools. its own United States Post Office. A memorial chapel. its own hotel, a lot like any other town. For recreation, it has a swimming pool. Its own golf course. you'd expect to find in any normal American community. Like any other community, it provides jobs. The hands of topographers and bookbinders, for example, are needed here. So are the skills of craftsmen of other sorts. From electricians to office workers, members of ten other unions are employed at Pressman's home. It's a rather special center of learning, home of a unique technical school. Hailed by the printing industry for the impact of this has. Welcome everyone, it is John here, coming to you from beautiful Rogersville, Tennessee. I'm at a really, really awesome place, as you see back here behind me. It is known as the Pressman's Home. Now, let me give you the history of the Pressman's Home, and let you know what it is and where it come from. At the turn of the century of 1900, the paper industry was booming all across the world. I mean, you're talking about England, you know, and the whole continent of Europe, Australia, the United States. Newspaper was the best source of information that you could find. So everyone got the paper, the paper companies were booming, and there was a really, really, really high demand for printing pressmen because they needed someone to run the machineries that printed the paper. So the International Union for Print and Pressmen started looking for a place to train people. So they wanted to build a trade school so they can bring people in, teach them how to run a print and press, and then send them out into the workforce. So they built their headquarters here in Rogersville, Tennessee. And right here behind me is the original trade school that was built here for the print and pressmen. Over here is a pretty cool building I'll get to in just a second. But they, they brought all these people here, so there was a, they, they didn't want, they wanted to keep them here, because this is a very remote location. 
So they built a hotel, they built apartments, they had all kinds of different housing for people that worked here. They had a grocery store where you can go get your own food. They built a chapel so people can go to church and worship the way they wanted to. Now, after a few years of them training people, running these press machines, they realized that the men running these printing presses were getting sick. They were getting tuberculosis. So what they did, they tried to work on a solution to prevent that, but they built a tuberculosis sanatorium right here on this property to take care of those people. This place even has a hydroelectric dam, its own power source. It's basically its own self-sustained city within these mountains here of Rogersville. So with that being said, as it got into the 1950s up into the early 60s, the demand for print and pressmen dropped. Was not a high demand anymore. By 1969, because of all the automated machines, it took less people to run them. The pre and pre pressman's home was no more. They shut their doors in 1969. This place has been abandoned ever since. They put a golf course near here that has failed. Um, called it Camelot. There was a hotel that was here that had burnt. There's still structures here. Now, I don't know what we can get into and what we can actually see inside of, but today is the maiden voyage for the Port of John 5000. So let's go. Check us out from there. Thank you. 
Over here is what remains of the hotel. You can see right through here is a little bit of a road that's left. I see you over. You're back to me. Oh, look at him. Yep. Now he's hiding. If you look up high here, this is all like basement area of the old hotel. Do not want to walk through these weeds. You could really fall to a nasty, painful end. Or it's that tree over where it got some hot. Yeah. Here's what's remaining of old powerhouse up here. Something underneath here, man. You can tell right here, used to be a structure. Don't know what it was. This building here is completely gutted. You have to walk through a lot of kudzu to get to it. It's just a shell that's left. So nearly nothing inside. The only thing that remains of the office area is this old office area. The... Walk through the kudzu here. Holy cow. Oh, this has been burnt. It's concrete floors. So it didn't look like the hotel is the only structure that burnt. Okay. You they set both of them on fire. I guess they did. Mm. Ironically, the fireplace is still here. It's crazy. I mean, how did it not burn the roof off? Yeah, like it scorched it though, look. Sure did. The old door there. Stove still sitting there. Back in the 80s and 90s, they had a guy that lived here that kind of watched over the place. Now this is part of the old hydroelectric plant. There is the PH, which stands for Pressman's Home, on that smokestack. Now back there used to be some apartments, and so did this. Now, this is all boarded up. And it's the water system now. So it's the water, utility water system. There is a new track hoe here that I'm wondering if they're about to tear this over here down. See, this has just been left in disrepair. Yeah. But see, there's felony signs all over the place on this section, so we're not gonna walk inside any of this. It's a pretty cool looking old building here. It's like barn stores. This might have been a maintenance building, actually, because there's like sliding doors on here and stuff. Over here looks more like an apartment style building. Wonder what they did here. One thing I can think of with this section, right through here was like the garden area and there's a silo and what used to be a barn. So maybe this is where they stored a lot of the food and grain and stuff that was used. There's an oil well. Right down there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right there is an oil well. Sort of new. Got an entry. Oh no. Well, it is disappointing that we can't get inside those. They are privately owned. Um, they stress to you to keep out. They store stuff in there. They use it for personal use. But I hope you enjoyed the story of Pressman's Home. It's on self-sustained city designed to train print and pressman uh really unique history here really awesome place i thank you guys for watching i thank you for coming along this adventure hope you enjoyed the maiden voyage of the porta john 5000 my new drone hope you enjoyed the shots i got i tried to get as much as i can so if anybody knows who owns this and can get us access 
feel free to hit me up. I'd love to get inside the trade school and mainly the tuberculosis sanatorium. And even there's a chapel back there too. So I'd love to see all that and get inside of it, film it, document it. Um, but unfortunately today we can't, but we have done the story of it. I think it's a story worth telling. So thank you. I love you guys. Till next time, you all have a wonderful day and we'll see you then.